Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy, your place to learn anything to do with Bitcoin. Now, topic of today's video is going to be Bitcoin as a unit of account. So here's the unit. <laughs> it's going to be a very straightforward discussion when it comes to Bitcoin unit of account economics. What do you think the first commodities, technologies, things, goods, services are going to be priced? But the actual thing that you're trying to buy in of itself, or digital thing, what you are trying to buy is priced in a quantity of sats, not because it has a dollar price that exchanges with Bitcoin and so you can pay with Bitcoin to settle. No, I'm talking about the actual unit of account phase. How do we get there? Well, I'll tell you what the first commodities are. Number one, Bitcoin per kilowatt hour. That is the, the miner having their power source and the output hash rate being essentially consumption and production and the routing of which one pays me more consume the energy to the network and it pays me bitcoin or i sell my energy to whoever's buying it and they pay me bitcoin those two can be the same so it creates a pricing system and i'll start with that one because it is one that's discussed here at the hash power academy what's the next one well this is something that I have been focused on for quite a while, which is the Terahash platform, which is quite focused on creating an interesting market pair between Bitcoin and hash rate in of itself. And that is not hash rate in a duration based contract. It's actually a unique setup that I have, which is essentially the, the, the ownership down to the hardware, not in a contract and hash rate digital layer but ownership to the hardware layer that's in hosting consuming energy making a bitcoin so the interesting third commodity on a bitcoin unit of account the reason i say third is because i actually missed missed the most first and fundamental important one which is bitcoin per virtual byte and where we delve into the pricing of the microchip supply chain which is the hardware side of things and the all different power sources and the technologies and the commodities underneath that produce electricity that if we have electricity priced in bitcoin a quantity of bitcoin because the the, the miner consuming the quantity of electricity being paid the quantity of bitcoin if that's all mathematically chained together i mean he has physics constraints that connect financially as a convenience so that there's a switching system there. What that does is that creates a very powerful Bitcoin unit of account commodity pricing system to which instead of that being solar as the uh, finest drawing example I have, that could be oil and gas, those different sorts of commodities which run through a technology framework to produce electricity and then the particular location-based aspects. But yeah, how we, how we delve into Bitcoin per terahash in terms of hardware market pricing, which these two are very much interlinked because it is the bridge of the network. But on the Bitcoin side of things, Bitcoin per virtual byte also spaces time because the different prices between the block right now versus the block in 10 minutes there's a different price. So the blockchain sort of prices time or the rate of settlement of time uh, as to how quickly truth is preserved and broadcasted to everyone to preserve the same perception so we have a shared reality thermodynamically secured. Now, this one gets interesting and connects to what is considered hash rate contracts, which creates an interesting pricing system in other areas, which is if you've got, if you know that a certain amount of electricity that you could produce with a dam that you want to build, if there's a way of plotting out what you think the effective amount of energy production that that dam can create uh, is, is possible and viable, and then you extrapolate that through computation to producing a quantity of Bitcoin, 
So it would be what, there's a few moving parts to it, but the, the premise here is to say, hey, what is Bitcoin going to finance? And in of itself, Bitcoin finances its own creation because if there's a, there is a price margin between the market price of Bitcoin, the market price of Bitcoin, and the production price, production cost. And that margin ensures that there is an incentive for someone to go out there, produce better chips, source more energy to produce more Bitcoin. That's the, that's the Trojan horse. And the incentives on the, that fundamental base layer, of we need to produce more energy across the board. We need a lot of energy and a lot of electricians. And if there is an ability for particular technologies that produce commodities in the network to extrapolate out the cost, the cost to build in terms of energy to build, <laughs> which is already priced in Bitcoin in this analogy um, scenario, the, yeah, to extrapolate out the cost time aspects of building the dam and its lifetime of producing power. And if that power can be project, if that power can be priced in Bitcoin through time and, and space, essentially, well, we can have a path to have this way of financing, hey, this dam is going to maybe produce 100 Bitcoin in, in its lifetime. Or let's say 1,000. Let's be nice. And we want to finance it. So we want to see where that capital rotation, not just through the pricing system of the real-time availability of electricity through the miners and the, the purchase and trade and settlement in the blockchain, but also how we get into those sort of more mature financing options of producing large scale infrastructure that produces power, because these are going to be the most critical components that truly bring out a Bitcoin unit of account. And the reason I say that um, is because everything to do with trying to price something in Bitcoin has to have a circular economy to it. And these three commodities are in of itself in a circular economy. It's all about the Bitcoin piece at the top with the expansiveness of everything underneath. But how we get the most core components of civilizational infrastructure across energy, electrical grids, computers and the microchip supply chain, and how that gets priced in Bitcoin is a whole video in of itself, uh, down to raw materials. Hash rate contracts are sort of a hash rate in of itself in duration based contracts that creates a, a Bitcoin unit of account because it's it's a rate of the commodity of hash rate producing Bitcoin. That mathematical layer, I personally am very much focused on this piece, which is to build that financial layer on top of trading pairs to commodities that already mathematically connect. It, it just unifies the system for liquidity in a very interesting way. One and only Bitcoin unit account that is existing today, Blockspace. The cost of storing your transaction information in blocks forever online from the nodes, the volunteers, and you're paying Bitcoin for it. So yeah, that is Bitcoin as a unit of account, very accelerated introduction. All of these pieces need a lot more conversation behind them, which I will very much explore in multiple further videos. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, send this to a friend and uh, yeah, see you in the future. Bye bye.